Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury CC3 with another exhibition match: Senek versus Didiebs on Tartarus, which is a map that has become fairly popular recently. I hadn't really heard of it until about a month and a half ago, but yeah, it's been played a fair amount recently, and it is quite good. Pretty good spider map. It's one that, I mean, with the hills on the side, it's, you want to take these hills pretty quickly because they are quite defensible and have three metal per spot along them. Whereas the rest of the map is all two metal per spot. Definitely a very valuable part of the map. Players do start in the northeast and southwest, and we do have Sanic starting out in the northeast. He has nothing planned. Okay, Sanic away from keyboard in the northeast side of the map. DD is on the other hand, in the southwest side of the map, going for Jump Jet Factory. By the way, this game was played on version 1253, so I think most of the balance changes were in. A lot of 126 stuff has been editing for the new engine version optimization and a few tweaks and such. There are balance changes, but I don't think they affect jump bots. I think they're primarily amphib. I'd have to double check. And I actually realized I forgot to turn on the attrition widget this entire time. Sorry about that. Some people were mentioning that they would like to see attrition, and I've not even sure if it's in this particular. Oh, it is in here. Shoot. Okay, well, I don't know if it matters all that much. We do have. Not, I guess this is how it works? I don't know. I'll keep it up here. I'm not entirely sure how this widget works, but since nothing has died, nothing has died so far, I'm guessing that the widget's gonna be fine. I was told to put it on at the start of games, and that's how it works. I haven't actually used it before. So I apologize if it's a little bit wonky, because I'm not entirely sure how it works, but we'll experiment. It's live, everybody. So yeah, Sanic's still not going for a factory. Not sure what his plan is. He's going to morph. He's building a lot of power. Apparently, he's not playing 0k. So, DDs is playing 0k. Sanic, I... Th no, he's not, even, he's not playing Nada either. I'm not sure what game he's playing. Apparently, he's decided that he's too good for factories. This is actually kind of messing up my naming and thumbnail conventions. Well, anyway. Sanic is not going for any factory at all. And DDs, however, is deciding to go for units. He decided that 0k is a game with units in it. And that's worth building them. So, right now... Okay, so how's this? I'm curious. This is ah, this is not okay. This is a widget for a single player. However, it looks like it does, I guess, operate from player one. So there's been two kills for player two and one for player one. I'm not 100 sure. No, really, I'm not actually sure how this this works. Well, figure it out anyway, or get it rewritten for actual spectating. So DDeebs getting some puppies along with his pyros. Going for puppies for harassment instead of pyros, which is not a bad idea. Especially given that Sanic has not gone for any factories. I think he might be handicapping himself. That's the only thing that comes to mind. He does have a level 2 commander with two nanolids and a Lazarus device. Along with particle beam for weapon. While more puppies coming out for DDeebs. And DDeebs is building a fairly decent economy. And is also getting the southeast side of the map. DDeebs going for the high value mexes. Good job. However, this is a handicap game, which is a little bit annoying. Gotta be honest, it's a little bit iffy. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgot this. The stream will have a different look. I guess I shall put it here? No. Oh, well, the mini gets in the way. Maybe I'll put it here. Yeah, that'll work. Not sure really where to put this. I honestly hadn't considered it beforehand, so... Sorry about that. Anyway, this, I believe, is in favor of... the. I think this is player... I guess this is player 2's deaths and player 1's deaths. I can only guess. Anyway. DD is coming in with more puppies. Yeah, 6 puppies coming in, and... Yeah, I believe this, that is how it works. So yeah, right now DD has lost about 500 metal compared to Sanic's 240 in terms of units. Really, it should probably be integrated inside this widget, honestly. But development ideas aside, jump jet plant for Sanic five four minutes into the game. Finally gets his factory up and it looks like he's terraforming radar. No, radar tower's down here. Terraforming into Sp Stinger, I think. I had to guess. Getting moderators of his own, that's a good choice. Getting rid of the pyros. Interesting to see a jump bot mirror, however, but that is what we are seeing. And DDeebs continuing to take more of the map. Does have twice the economy of Sanic, but like I said, I think Sanic has handicapped himself. 
That's why we see the Jump Jet Factory four minutes into the game rather than right at the start when it could have been. So, Sanic terraforming for some reason. Yeah, Stardust at the top. That's what he's going for. Figured it'd be Stinger, but yeah, Stardusts are apparently quite popular nowadays. Who knew? I only really saw them before in the occasional times where I just happened to look at chicken defense stuff just because I was curious to see how people played in that game mode. That's the only time I've really ever seen it. Also, because it's great to get mass screenshot, like mass unit screenshots. I haven't seen them in 1v1 all that often. Occasionally see them later in the game, if it's in late Raider stage. But yeah, Stardusts don't come up all that often. It's a bit of a new trend. DD is however going for Lotuses, which is much more normal. And also going for about four Pyros running into this moderator. I'm pretty sure, okay, these will, these will make it. If they jump in to kill the moderator, they will win. Deedeebs does, does he have Raider? He does have Raider, he knows what's coming in. He doesn't know what is coming in, but he knows that there's something. Sanic also has Raider, we saw before. He doesn't really have any vision of what's going on besides what his moderator can see. Everything inside Radar, he can't, nothing relevant really. Oops. All these puppies are right outside of Radar range. Deedeebs just happened to get them right outside of the Radar range, so Sanic has no idea they are there. And Stardust, I, actually I'm not sure. Seven Pony asking if Stardust is countered by Rocco's 410 range. I think it is. I think the range is low enough. Let's see these. Yeah, I think Rocco's have 460 or 450 range. Like, they're very close to Lotus. So yeah, they would outrange Rocco. Or sorry, would outrange Stardust. I'm pretty sure. However, that's irrelevant because we're not dealing with Clicky Butt Factory. We're dealing with Jump Jet Factory. And Steve's at this point has actually surrounded Sanic pretty well. And that's one thing with the attrition widget. These puppies are meant to die. <laughs> but yeah, I suppose they didn't deal all much damage. They didn't really make cost, but at this point, probably doesn't make the biggest difference. One of them is going to scout out, does spot the moderators. However, three moderators is a bit tricky to deal with the pyros, but a bunch of pyros are actually going in a great position. These puppies were to go north, deal with these two lotuses, and the py pyros came after them, but that's not going to happen. Instead, they're going to go for the moderators directly. They're going to jump into the moderators. Terra Power 1 right off the bat. The other two moderators are not far enough away to avoid being destroyed, and down they go, burning to death horribly, dying in a fire. As I'm sure DDs is quite happy to see. At this point, he is slightly ahead in terms of units lost or units killed. However, more importantly, he's ahead in terms of units currently alive, which is four pyros here. That's why I'm not really sure about the attrition widget. But hey, need experiment. So it is four pyros right behind this radar. I think Sanic is relying on Radar Shadow. Clever if he is. DDs would be aware that something has moved back here, but honestly, it could actually move around. There's enough opening in the radar that these pyros could have escaped by now. They could be going around back. I don't think DDs knows where the radar is exactly. Actually, he doesn't know where the radar is exactly. He has only an idea of where the fact. No, just where some of the power structures are, not even the factory. Does not have line of sight, so he don't does not have any clear idea of where that radar is. But he did guess correctly, apparently for the radar shadow. The pyros move back into radar view. Actually, they're gonna go around the back, go for attacking the base while moderators try to deal with the front lines. And I mean try, those moderators are not doing too well, unfortunately, for Sanic. However, this is a bit of a problem. Pyros do not outrange the Stardust. They have 280 range to 410. They can jump in, but they these are anti-raider units. These are anti-mass units. One of them might go... No, it's not even going to go down. They're trying to get out of the way. Pyro's just trying to get out of dodge. Kill out... what? Kill off what they can. Try to get rid of the factory. And actually, should be able to kill the factory. Gets rid of the metal extractor. This factory is taking a lot of damage. The power here doing a pretty good job getting rid of the factory, but... Wait, why isn't it attacking? Okay, there it goes. Finishing out that factory. Once that factory goes down, that will... Reduce Sanic's options, but honestly, he was not relying very much on units to begin with. His commander at level 2 still. No change there. And DD's commander also at level 2. Radar as well as Beamlet. So actually, that's where his radar is coming from. One of his radars. He does have a solid radar. He does have a radar tower. But he also has a commander providing radar, which is kind of handy. So yeah, DD's, because of that, he does see where the radar is. He has full knowledge of what Sanic is up to. Or actually... Yes, he does know all this stuff. He does, in fact, have full knowledge of what Sanic is up to. Just wanted to confirm that from his point of view. Yeah, D. Deebs is well aware. Getting placeholders and jacks just to finish off. I'm a little surprised he's going for the placeholder. Actually, 
Why is he going for placeholders? This does not make sense. See, placeholders are used when you're dealing with a lot of mobile units. Because, especially really fast units, they put them in just a, one spot so you can get anything to deal with them, really. Pyro is most often, but anything. Any sort of slow fire unit, you just trap your opponent's units and then they're free to kill. However, being that DD's is up against pretty much pure static defense, Sanic only has his commander as army. I don't really see the point of the placeholders. That was a bit of a waste of cash, I'm afraid. 750 metal poured into effectively nothing. Oh, 1,000 now. So yeah, placeholders are not useful in this particular context. Not sure, I mean, okay, to be fair, as far as DDs is concerned, Sanic is probably rebuilding a factory or has another factory and building more mobile units. That's something he is probably gonna assume, which that normally happens. That honestly normally happens. So, oh yeah, DD's also building a gunship plant, getting a black on, much more useful use of his metal. But yeah, Sanic has, is, will be resurrecting the jump jet factory. He does have a res order on it. That's going to take a while to do, though. It's going to take at least a minute and a half or so. But yeah, DDBs would reasonably expect that Sanic would have another factory, so building those placeholders is not a bad idea. There's too many of them, but building them at all, like one or two, that's good. I mean, reasonable assumption. A bit of scouting would find out that no, that's not the case, but honestly, it's kind of hard to scout with all the Stardust around, so I can't blame DDBs. His actions are quite reasonable given what he thinks he knows. However, he will soon find out that the Jumpshot Factory has been rebuilt. Sanic is up to level 3 with more Nanolathe, 31 build power worth of Nanolathe, and only 10 metal. Uh, not quite the most useful combination there. Yeah, Sanic, a little behind on that. Well, DD is building more Jacks. The Jacks are good. Actually, the Jacks are really good. The placeholder is not so much, but Jack Pyro together in this context. That would be awesome. That would just... Tank all the defenses while the Pyros tear them to shreds or burn them all up. But that's not happening. DDBs is going for a Jack placeholder, which is going to be, well, useful for the Jacks at least. I mean, they're going to, not really going to have much damage tanked for them, but hey, they're not going to die too quickly. And here comes the Black Dawn. Brawler coming in on top of that. If that comes in, they should be able to deal a decent amount of damage. Black Dawn plus Brawler against this. Actually, Black Dawn alone against this should do fine. Black Dawn plus, plus Brawler. I think the Black Dawn is the better option. Though, in come some Pyros and some Jacks as well. And a Scuttle on top of that. We'll see if the Scuttle can be rendered because it wasn't working before. So now the placeholders will be a bit more useful. At this point, DD doesn't want them to die. That's for sure. If, he, if they die, that's bad. Jacks, they are able to jump in. I know Sanic notices the placeholder apparently in the game. Yeah, Jacks will be able to get rid of this and just tear apart everything. Let's rip it apart, and the placeholders will stop the pyros. That will be useful. You will be able to get in their way. Just put a little black hole down, or a few black holes down. Stop all the pyros. But it's not happening quite yet. We'll be pretty soon. And there it goes! The placeholders come in, and all of them fire off, trapping the pyros in place. And moving. Well, okay, allowing TDs to get the jacks out of the way. Honestly, the jacks should just rush in and attack. The placeholders have done a really good job on this, and all well, those pyros need to get rid of this pyro as well. Unfortunately, all of them fired at once onto that small group of pyros and onto all of them. And the jacks did not take advantage of that. Pyros still have a couple seconds of being held in place, and down two of them go. The last one has been placed. All unfortunately, placeholder does do friendly fire, does trap its own units. So one of the jacks going down, and actually, it's gonna bite DDBs a bit. Not too much. The Jacks are able to recover in time. And stopping that power from dealing too much damage. However, the Jack not running away. Why is the Jack not running away? Okay, it doesn't matter now. It's going to burn to death at this point. Yeah, that could have that could have gone away. That could have gotten out of there. A little bit off. However, those placeholders now working. And yeah, there's the Scuttle. So it's visible, apparently. Not sure I didn't see it before. We'll have to keep an eye on that. However, more placeholders coming in. And just like, why no? Actually, I guess, moder I guess Pyro's Moderator is the best option. Really. Jacks aren't terrible. Moderator is the best option. And a Jack in here for DDs. Pyro being pulled out of the way to just deal less damage. The placeholders are doing a good job here. It's just that they are, unfortunately, with friendly fire that's not working out. They work... I mean, placeholders work wonders against Jacks, preventing them from moving in to actually deal any damage. They don't work wonders for Jacks, I'm afraid. But against Jacks, they do a wonderful job. And given that there are some of the units coming in, that will work. And, okay, yeah. Scuttle is visible, oddly enough. So let's keep an eye on that one. See, he's doing his thing. 
Moving in towards the southeast side of the map. Looks like it might be trying to get rid of the gunships. Actually, he's not aware of the gunships. Sanic has no idea at all there are gunships here. He is aware of, obviously, there's a main base with a factory that's jumped at factory. Probably going to go for that, or possibly just go for the jacks directly. Sanic's commander, however, does have a sunburst cannon. Oh, I've never seen a sunburst cannon before. Basically, it looks like a double sharpshooter weapon. Okay, wow, not bad. And that was a good placeholder shot. Give it, buying his units time to escape back to defenses. The moderators and puppies can get them. Very nice shot there. Probably was automatic, though. Just so happened it worked out. Still, that worked out. However, the scuttle is coming in, and it looks like it's going to be probably tearing apart. It's going to destroy this defensive line. In fact, is he going to... No, it's kind of going to pay attention to the defensive line. Just going to keep going past that. Going to continue along, not even bothering. And looks like... Is that scuttle going to get in there? Where is it going to get in? It's going to go for the jacks, I think. We'll see, though. It's not going to attack it. Well, no, it got spotted! And neutralized. Jax took some damage, but not as much as it would have if the scuttle managed to actually make contact. However, puppies do scout out the gunships as the gunships move out. And basically, yeah, the puppies... Puppies do deal with gunships pretty well. A large group of puppies will destroy a gunship army. Something to point out, as I mentioned on Saturday... Jump jets, pretty much all together jump jets counter gunships. Every jump jet pretty much can hit gunships and deal with them pretty effectively. Pyros being the least able to do so, even they are a threat. Puppies being probably the most able to do so, though you need large numbers. And DDP is going to move in quickly. The Archangel is halfway done. 20 seconds away from being done, but no, he's moving back to base to get repaired. That is not the thing he wants to do because the Archangels are very tough to dislodge once they're built. And I know there's all these Stardust here. They are kind of threatening. But with what he has, he could tear them apart no problem. Now, and yes, the Scuttle has cloaked, by the way. That Scuttle was cloaking. That was the cloaking jiggle. Scuttle's cloak. They remain cloaked while moving, I guess. I'm not sure how it got decloaked, honestly. But it did. And it got place held and destroyed. By and large, neutralized. And DD was going for a bunch of puppies of his own. I'm a little surprised he hasn't gone for moderators and pyro... No, oh, yeah. Decent amount of puppies. They are getting rid of... Radar, getting some reclaim in. St avoiding Stinger, getting kind of lucky on that one. Still a lot of puppies in play. It's about 20 puppies just for Deebs. And Sanic, Sanic has a companion drone apparently at level 4. Got a companion drone on top of, is that 50 build? 43 build power and Lazarus device. Sanic, he can rebuild anything Deebs throws at him. DDs has got to be careful. Actually, I think that might be why DDs didn't attack with the gunships, because he didn't want to lose them and have them used against him. That is probably why. But if the puppies if the puppies get rid of Sanic's commander, that then then DDs can run in and just tear him apart. There's got to be careful with the Stardust. He can't lose his units. If he loses them, that's a problem. And the Stardust coming in. The Black Dons should be able to deal with the Stardust, no problem. The, bra the Brawlers, however, have a harder time because they have to stand and fight. The Black Tons can run in, attack, and run away. Not use them, though, surprisingly enough. Getting more of them. Getting more and more units. Not sending the puppies in either. 48 puppies currently for Sanic. I don't know if there's any for DDBs. Sorry, sorry. That, I mean, other way around. 48 for DDBs, none for Sanic. There is a scuttle coming for Sanic, however. And the puppies are coming in. Look, like they're going to try to get rid of the commander. And will it succeed? And no, they're getting rid of a razor first. However, they're going for the commander, and down it goes. Nice kill there. Lazarus device off the table. And Deedeebs, she should move in. He needs to move in, or they. I should know his gender. They need to move in with everything. Because they have just opened up the path. No real anti air. Definitely no. Well, okay, there's a couple of archangels. That's, that is real anti air. But no Lazarus device. That is huge. No Lazarus device to deal with. It doesn't matter. Sanic has surrendered, realizing he can't do much against this. And that is going to be game. And that's actually going to be it for me tonight, since I'd like to go to bed at some point. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm still not confident the Artrician Widget actually made all much difference. If it, it's the percentage here. That's sort of the problem. It's the fact that it is clearly designed to be used in 1v1 mode. Or rather, as a player, rather than as a spectator. Still an interesting concept. Not sure if I'm going to keep it. I'm probably going to drop it for now. But good to know it's there. And good to have tried it out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that game. And that will be it for me tonight. So thank you all for watching. And have a good night, everyone.